It's time once again to slip into your camo, grab your bow, and join us out in the field for another episode of the Up North Journal, presented by PSE Archery. The Up North Journal crew is knocked and ready to rock for another exciting adventure. So let's step outside and hit the trail. This episode of the Up North Journal podcast is brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limwalker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, Gut Check Indicators, and Packer Mets Cult Packers. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on GoodTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to another episode of the Upner Journal Podcast, everybody. My host, Mike Adams, sitting in the cabin tonight with the air conditioning and Dan DeFall. Absolutely, Killer Adams. I've been slaying. You have been. You've been. I was eyewitness to it today. You were. You walked in. I walked in and said, "You want to? You want to witness this live? <laughs> you want to? You want to film a groundhog going down?" I'm surprised you didn't break open the camera and uh, take it. Uh, uh, oh, the elk hunt. Actually, Courtney, we're going to get into that. That's what we're going to talk yep, about tonight. In the first segment of the show tonight. Hey, but... Ken Sakluna, what's going on? Thanks for joining. But yeah, uh, so you're up to number eight. Yeah, yeah. They. Uh, I'm, I'm passing out eviction notices. I'm passing them out in these. <laughs> and, but now you're out of that ammo. I actually have to get my, my coyote ammo, my, my hand loads out, my right? re, my reloaded uh, exactly. ammo. Exactly. I don't like that at all. That gets That's a little more expensive. Well, or do you want a dug up yard? Well, they've already kind of moved in. There's three def- different den sites. And, uh, you want to have some fun? I've, I've pit, passed out eviction notices. Do, well, pour some gas down them and light them? No, because they're under two of them. One's under an outbuilding, the other one's under my garage, and the other one's next to the house under the decks. So no, I don't want to burn stuff down. Oh, I was going to suggest some M80s, but well, I was going to fill the holes full of water, but I can't get to them. To well, I'll get to one. But so you get the under the deck. What's that? You got one under the deck? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, a family moved in under the deck, and I can't get to them because they're always back in the corner against the house. Wow. Yeah, but I, I think I got, well, I don't know if I got rid of them. I shot I shot one of those that, that came out of there Thursday. I think it was Thursday. Wow. Two today, one this morning, one when you walked in. I've had it, man. I tell you, I've had it. And the neighbor the neighbor missed one, and he shot one, so that's nine. Uh, you it, two guys are just racking them up. Yeah, it's well, he, he's uh, 50-50. He's one for two, and I'm uh, eight for nine. <laughs> <laughs> right? I did miss one, but, uh, you know, hey. The way it goes, but uh, no, it's a uh, it was a busy weekend. You know, I took off up north after work uh, Friday night. Went to deer camp. And How was the drive? Drive was good. It was a good drive up. Beautiful drive. Traffic wasn't bad at all. Good. Although I did get flipped off one time. Oh, not bad. Yeah, just once. Just once. Not bad. Yeah, had to laugh at the guy, but and his wife. She flipped me off too. <laughs> oh, nice, nice, nice. So, well, did you leave after work on Friday? Yes. Yeah, freeway was was packed around Flint. Once I got you know up above base, yeah, sagging all this shit thinned out, so wasn't bad. Chris no, it was a great drive. Saw a lot of deer on the way up. Chris Kreiner said, uh, "Good shooting." Yeah, hey, I I could use you over here for backup, Chris. Man, I tell you what, they're they're invading. Right, exactly. Stinking groundhogs. Um, I'm putting them out back for coyote bait, though. You come back today? No, I came back last night. Okay. Late, late last night. Good because uh, I guess there was a an RV. Uh, the one that was being pulled kind of came off the hitch and crashed at Corona Road. Oh, no. Yeah, so I'm sure that was a nightmare. Blew apart? I'm sure it became part of the a lot of the highway. Wow. You know, and, and that happens every summer. It's oh, just, yeah, it does. Um, we were coming back from Bay City when we were doing the fireworks festival, and I was pulling our utility trailer for the, the TV station, and there was another guy behind me from the station in a, in a company vehicle, and he said a guy, I didn't see it, a guy was pulling a boat, and as he come up by my trailer, he started getting the huckabuck on the on the road and almost took my trailer out. Really? I, I didn't see it at all. I was just, I was cruising. A couple weeks ago, I was heading south on 23, and I was in the right-hand lane, and in the left-hand lane was a SUV, not a, um, like a crossover vehicle pulling a trailer. Right. And in the in the trailer, they had two mattresses stacked, and they had a, a tie-down going across uh-huh. in the middle. Uh-huh. We came across, uh, we came underneath the Owen uh, Road Bridge, and all of a sudden, one of those matches is lifted. Flight. Yeah. Grew wings. It grew, came out of the trailer. <laughs> In slow motion, I'm yeah. looking at this thing going, I'm doomed. Did you drive under it? 
I drove literally right past it. Really? And it went and it landed in the left hand lane, luckily, and then skidded over to the side. Wow. That was one. And then just a few days ago, we were traveling north up to Frankenmuth. And I was kind of playing tag with this uh, truck pulling this uh, pontoon boat. And we're, he's on my right, he's on my left, he passes me, I pass him. Right. Well, he gets in the left lane and he's passing me. And all of a sudden, it was covered. It had a cover. And all of a sudden... Was. Well, <laughs> it still stayed covered. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, comes this blue dustpan in slow motion into my lane. And it hits right for my windshield. Hits my windshield and obliterates into like 50 million pieces. Good thing it was plastic. Uh, yeah. Wow. So, but yes, traveling on the highway can can be dangerous. I tell you, it's, uh, you know, guys and gals, when you're out there traveling the roads, back your pickup, uh, trailers, whatever, make sure your stuff is tied down, secured, not going anywhere. Double check the hitches on them. Absolutely. Safety chains. Safety chains. That's you know, um, it, I watched a boat, a pontoon actually come off of a truck on a trailer. This was coming back. This was years ago. I was following it down M65. Really? It came, it hit, it hit a bump and it came off, no safety chains, and, it, and it, it kind of nosed down and it had a wheel, but it, it was cranked up, so it kind of nosed down and it rolled and it pulled up, like it pulled right over next to a mailbox and stopped. Come on. Dead serious. Dead serious. I mean, it took a little while, but yeah. it, it freaked me out because the truck kept going and I'm like, you know, <laughs> oh, I'm man. like, this thing's going to come off. It's going to blow apart, whatever. But uh, yeah, I hit the brakes and stopped and watched it. It was pretty wild. Yeah, that, that, and they, that, when the guys backed up, they were shaking like a leaf. Oh, I totally get it. <laughs> totally get it. So, but you know, that's all about safety. In, in, when you got things on, um, if you got one of those uh, hitch haulers, make sure it's not close to the exhaust. Yeah, we saw one of our. We won't mention any names. Nope. But one of our friends, um, actually, Courtney, if you're still watching, you you know, who, know this who this is. is. Had a box, a tote, and had it on the back of a tow deck. Uh, or one of those receivers has a little platform, and the exhaust was right where the the box, the tote was. Plastic melt, tote was. And melted it. Melted it nicely. So, hey, before we get going too far tonight, uh, don't forget uh, Hunter's Blend Coffee. I want to give them a shout-out. 10% off of your order if you use the UNJ promo code, and you will get 10% off of your order. So make sure that you use that right there, UNJ. That's right. Hunter's Blend Coffee. Tastes good tonight. Com. Yeah, absolutely. Tastes good tonight. You know, I had this this morning, matter of fact, as well. Did you? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I had uh, I had some earlier today, too. I was out early painting early this morning before the sun got too high. Well, I did some work up at, at camp. Uh, yes, before I get did. into the elk stuff, um, I, I one of the reasons I went up north was, um, and just going to put this out there, because actually we're looking for a couple members at our lodge. Uh, we've got two memberships available, and I wanted to move my room into another room. So that was my busy saturday morning okay so you're moving i was moving so i cleaned everything out everything my dad left couldn't be two men in a truck it'd be mike and a two i had only wanted really with two two garbage bags full of stuff to throw away out of the room i I thought it was going to be a ton more should have it could have been should have been maybe um i don't know but long story short got everything moved and got rid of some stuff and yeah i got settled in so had, then, some, had some good weather up there. Beautiful weather. Actually, it was hot. Um, it got really hot during the day. So uh, with that being said, uh, I was just roasting. Had the windows open, had a fan on, trying to stay cool. And, yeah, it was hot. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. You, it, it, I'm assuming the wind died down and there was no wind at all movement. Right, right. It, it was, it was, it wasn't miserable, but it was just hot. It's hot. There's but, no doubt about it. No, I, I wanted to move. Um, I wanted to get down all the way to the end of the hall so I could actually bring my stuff in the door and go right into my room instead of bring it all the way down the hall. Every time I come up, I go up north hunting. You know me. I mean, I pack everything but the kitchen sink. You got to. You know, when I go up for a week, I take everything. And by the time I get done logging everything in, taking it all the way down the hall and getting in the room, it, it's I'd rather just come in the door, bang, right there, boom, and be done with it. Right, exactly. So that's what I did. You know, and that's a, that's the a funny thing about that is it, every time you go up north, it's it's like, no, oh, I should. I'm only going to go for a couple of days, and you still end up taking a bunch of stuff. Absolutely. Oh yeah, Courtney saw it. <laughs> yeah. So I just, yeah, she saw it. It melted. <laughs> right, it did. Tim C says, "Nice shirt, by the way." Thank you very much. Proud supporter of the Up North Journal. That's right. So, did you see anything? Yes, I did. I saw I saw a bunch of geese at camp. A ton of geese on the lake. Yeah, on the lake and in the pond. Yep. Actually, I have a picture. I should have put it up. So, uh, are they uh, hanging out there? 
Yeah, they still got some juveniles. They're oh, not, really? Yeah, they're they're not. There's there's a uh, some that aren't just ready to quite take flight yet. I think most of them are probably going to start getting to where. They, I think this is about the time of year, right around the middle of July, is usually when they start taking flight. I think maybe August. It's mid July, so it's yeah. getting pretty close. Yeah, I know the little footballs are getting bigger. So, but there is one. There is one uh, flock that uh, the the broods don't have. The, the young geese don't have their uh their full plumage yet. Oh. They're yeah. they're they're still that fuzzy, fuzzy. grayish brownish color. So they were late. Yeah, late clutch. But really here in Michigan, they can be late like that and not, not have to worry about really much here. We need to thin them out. That well that well that goes to say with all Canadian geese. Right. You know, that's one thing I did notice around where I work. In the spring we had a whole bunch of them. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden they're all gone. I'm, I'm hmm. kind of curious as to what happened. Yeah, what made a move? Yeah, I wonder if they had somebody come in over the weekend and kind of help them evacuate. Shoo them out of there, maybe? Yeah, that's Could what I'm be. thinking. Because I was like, because I, I, I would drive the, the around campus and I'd easily see five, six on nests. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay. And then all of a sudden they all disappeared. So I wonder if they captured them and moved them. That's what I'm thinking they happened. Because I know we had, in the last few years, we've had a, a series of attacks. <laughs> no kidding. Oh, yeah. People get a little too close. A little too close. All right, that's what happens. So. And the geese can be a little aggressive, right? So, hey, I tell you what, uh, why don't we go ahead and take our first break and come back? We'll, we'll kind of jump into uh, some other stuff here. Let's so, do it. We'll be right back after this. PSE Archery has reinvented the way you buy bows. From now on, you can make the most educated decision possible by basing your bow choice specifically on your shooting needs and goals. All you need to do is ask yourself, what kind of shooter am I? What do I want to achieve? PSE will help find the right category for you. So, what kind of shooter are you? Find out at pseartree.com. Welcome back, second segment of the show. Talking about critters, talking about up north, all kinds of good stuff. Talking uh, about some scout, uh, well, speaking of, our question that we have on there. Um, yeah, question we posted. Yeah, we got a question up on the live feed. Uh, have you put have trail you, cameras out? Yeah, have you gotten the, the, the trail cameras out there? Uh, some do it all year round, some do it part of the time, and some do it just before hunting season. Right. So we just kind of want to know if you guys, mine are out. 75% yes so far. Yours are not out. No. And actually, it's... And the reason I know this is because there's a big pile of them right over there that I have to step over to get to the lights. Yep. Those uh, those are for here in Michigan. Um, we've got a, uh, the Cuddy Link system that we're using down in is Indiana. Is that up and running? No. Oh. I, I'm going to get down and uh, hopefully here soon and help them get that up and running. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, the boys down there have been really busy, and, and things are starting to uh, get close here. So it's, uh, oh, no, Courtney says. Uh, just Canadian. Just Canadian geese, yeah. Yeah, and they crap everywhere. Yeah, so, but shit. no, we've got to get that system up and running. Uh, deer starting to put bone on their head at a tremendous rate right now. Starting to see a few pictures come back from uh, the northern Michigan area. People are posting. and They're so, growing. Yeah, they're growing. I'll and, have to get the picture of the one in the backyard. We've still got. Another three, four weeks, possibly, that they can put put bone on their head. So, you know, it's uh, get them cameras out. Yep. Them out Cord- Cordy says she has her one camera out there. And uh, Charles Byron says the countryside where you were scouting for elk is beautiful. Yeah, I did a little live stream from that. Yeah. I were... tried to as best I could because I knew once I got into the area deep, I'd lose signal. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so I made it in about nine minutes. Is that what it was? Nine minutes. And then it went, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that area is absolutely beautiful. Um I don't even know where to begin this story. Actually, but... actually, I don't know where there isn't a beautiful place north. Well, there's something very special about the Pigeon River area. It's a it's a sanctuary kind of. You know, I mean, it, there is hunting allowed there, but there's no RVs, no off road vehicles allowed. This is pristine wilderness. It's just it's simply an amazing place. And I shot my first buck there when I was that seven. one. Yep, the one up here on the wall when I was 17 years old, and. I mean, I've talked about this a couple different times on the show before, but when I when I shot that buck, it was run with a big bull elk, and it was in this area, and this is where I'm going elk. Uh, this so. still kills you that a, the buck was running with a bull elk. Well, there was actually there was ten deer. It was a group. It, I saw the, the the bull coming out of the woods, and I'm like, 
oh my gosh, the first one I'd ever really s- seen. I mean, I'm a 17 year old snot nosed kid, you know, and I'm just in awe. And back right. then, in 1981, we weren't hunting them here in Michigan. No, they weren't. You could not hunt them. And I knew they were in the area, but this thing comes, you know, comes crashing through the woods, you know, big old huge rack on them. And I'm just focused on that. And all of a sudden, I see movement behind them. And here comes all these deer. And they all, the bull stops about 30 yards away. And the deer keep coming in front of me. And I'm like, doe, 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 doe. And I'm looking. The last one's a buck. I pull up and I shot it and dropped it. And the elk stood there. No, really? I'm like, dude, go get. You know, and he's he's not afraid of me because they're not, you know, they're not being hunted. No, they're. He's like, you're in, you're in my area. Could care less. And he's, you know, kind of rustling these antlers. and It is their rut, right? Yeah. You know, doing his thing. And I'm like, geez, old Pete's. And I kind of got behind a tree and waited it out and. He milled around, and I gutted the deer out, and he stood around while I was gutting the deer. Really? Yeah, I kept the rifle close, man. Didn't take off or nothing? No, no. So it was quite quite an adventure. Yeah, for your first deer, <laughs> Yeah. let alone a buck, you got an elk with it. And, yeah. You know, here you are many years later getting ready to go chase a cow elk, but how big was the buck? How big was the elk? Oh, jeez, I don't know. I didn't okay. count points. All right, it was, it was, it was a it big was rat. big. It was okay. big, yeah. I mean, But, uh, wow. It wasn't your typical four or five by five. I mean, it was it was huge. I mean, it had back scratchers and the whole nine yards. You know, this kind of brings up something to me that you seem to be hunted a lot. What do you mean? Well, you shot your first buck. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And an elk started, stood around. And yeah. Did, at one time, he could have charged you, but he didn't. Yeah. And wasn't it last year the coyotes were kind of surrounding Oh, you? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I see a pattern here. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is. We're going to get around any bears. Mm. I've had close encounters with them, too. So... Um, but yeah, so, you know, lo and behold, I drew an elk tag this year, uh, 40,000 people put in for elk tags here in Michigan this year, over 40,000 and for 200 tags. And I was fortunate enough to draw one. I think there's 30 of those 200 are bull tags. Okay. So, you know, the odds of getting a bull tag are even greater or or even less, even harder to get than, than what I got. Right. Exactly. But I've been putting in for over 20 years for these things, so. It's been a long time, and, you know, some people get, you know, put in for their whole lives and never get them, so. Um, oh, that's it, right? You you, you said 40000 put in for it? Yeah, for 200 tags. You're doing the math. He's quickly typing, and. For a bull, if you said there was 30 tags. Yeah. That would be a point zero 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 seven wow. chance. Point zero 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 seven. All right. Wow. So, anyways, but you got it. So, you went up scouting. Yeah, I, I took off this weekend. I mean, like I said, I had two different things I wanted to do. I wanted to go move my my room, uh, move furniture out of my room, get into the other room. And then the idea was to, at that point, take off and head up into elk country, which is about an hour, hour and a half drive from our camp. And I was going to spend the rest of the day there. Okay. Scouting, doing whatever. Um, the biggest thing, there's a mandatory meeting place you have to meet at for the DNR the day before the hunt begins. Yes. You, it's mandatory. You you, uh, you don't purchase a tag. You purchase a receipt for the hunt. And once you get that receipt, you take that with you to this mandatory meeting. You check in, and you go through this hour, maybe two-hour little meeting, and they tell you the do's, the don'ts, let you ask questions, give you tips, all that kind of stuff. And from that point, when you're done with the meeting, then you get to go over and they issue you a, your tag. All right for the area that you're hunting. And that's the way that works. And uh, Charles Byron's got a quick question here. Yep. Seemed like there was a lot of traffic up there in the elk area. Was that other hunters scouting or just tourists? The, actually, Charles, that area, well, yeah, you, there was a lot. There was, I think I ran across three or four different cars that were, as I was driving. Okay. There is a lot of traffic in that area this time of the year because the, the people will come up from downstate. They'll go north. People go up north to go camping, kayaking, vacationing, whatever. And that area is known for the elk, and they have viewing areas. And actually, I pulled off to a viewing area at one point, and that's where I started the first car that he's talking about. And it's a big food plot, huge food plot out there. And that's people will park and watch them, yeah, do their thing. But there was none there that evening. Oh, okay. So, so you know, and Tim Cias is asking, uh, oh, Courtney, he drew a cow tag, and Tim says, "What's your opinion of the lottery system for residential hunters?" Um. Obviously, I think it's good because <laughs> well, I got a okay. tag. So, <laughs> but, so, but no, I I think the lottery they changed it. It's weighted. Well, in the beginning, you just put had, in. You just put in, and then as the years went by, you started noticing people getting 
drawn a couple times. Yep. And people are getting really upset about that. Yep. And it was like, wait, wait, why is that person having a second, third, and fourth chance? When so, I haven't even gotten one I've been putting in for how right, long. Exactly. So I think they changed it to weighted, and then they also changed it that if you get a bull tag. If you draw a bull tag, you can never hunt elk in Michigan again. Yep. You can never put in for the draw again. Yep, it's done. And then if you get a cow tag. It's 10 you, years. Yep, you got to wait 10 years. Except there is one caveat to that. It's called the pure Michigan hunt. Even though I've got a cow tag and I'm done for 10 years, I can no longer put into that draw. I could buy opportunities to get into what's called the pure Michigan hunt. Okay. And if you get drawn, I think there's four people that are drawn for that a year. It's it's like a lottery. Yep. What you get there is you get a, a deer tag, you get a bear tag, you get a turkey tag, and you get an elk tag. Yep. And I don't know if the, I, the elk is a bull. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I don't know. But anyway, that's that's another way you can you can have an opportunity to do that. I've never put in for that. So, I haven't either. Yeah, I just I put in for the other one. Right. But the way they weighted this system now is when you put in, like, they, they take all your cumulative years. Let's just say 20, because I know I put in for at least 20, if not longer. This year, I had 20 chances to be drawn. My right. name went in the hat 20 times. So every time you put in for it and you're not drawn your point total goes up, and that's another opportunity for your name to go in the hat the following year. If you aren't selected, does your points carry over? What do you mean? Like, okay, so you, let's say you put in this year. Yeah. You had 20 chances. Yeah. You got drawn, but let's say you didn't get drawn. Do you still, are you still accumulating? Would you get 21 next year? Yeah, they accumulate, they keep accumulating until you're drawn or until you quit putting in. You can stop putting in for a period of five years. After five years, your points yeah. go to zero. I'm at 15, I think. Okay. So that's kind of the way that works. Right. So, But no, I do. I, I really think the way they do it now is a lot more so. fair than what it was in the past. Yeah, I think so too. I think, uh, like you said, getting a bull tag, you're done. Yep. You know, there's your, there's your ultimate chance. Cow tag, you know, we'll just wait 10 years and then maybe get a bull tag. Right. That's fair. Yep. Because like you said, there's only 200 out of 40,000 a year. Yep. And then when you start hearing this, this person that got a second and third chance, you're like, yeah. So. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it, it's one of those things. Uh, uh, Tom Gensel says, still applying every year, forever, even before points. Tom, does that make you that old if you've been applying forever? I can't remember when they started the points, the, the point draw. I want to say it was in the late 80s, I think. I think it was in the late Maybe it was in the mid-80s. Can you shoot any cow, or does it have to be a certain size? Don't know that yet. I assume it's any cow. I think it's any cow according to the uh the guide that i'm i'm, I'm going to use right so but so driving around it was hot it was humid yeah you know it was uh the bugs were out it was how were those bugs they were thick as thieves man were they yeah they yeah, were they were pretty bad time here. so but yeah i went up through the area and i had my trusty map with me that i got this is what is given to you when you draw a tag and the little purple dots is the 2019 elk sighting that they've they've got so far. Uh, oh, where people? No, I take that back. Oh. I, yes, yes, that is 2019 sightings. The purple dots are the black dots are the 2018 December hunt kill sites. Okay, so they give you kind of a directory as to where things are happening. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and I use this map. I was going to drive around through the area, and I got about halfway through where I wanted to go, and at that point. When you get in deep into this area, these roads, sometimes you don't know if it's a road or if it's a two-track because there's really no road signs. And you oh. got you got to kind of play it by ear and kind of look at the land features and where you're at and figure out how far you've traveled. And I got turned around. <laughs> <laughs> and where I, th where I wanted to go, I wound up driving completely through the entire area all the way to the north side and having to come back around. And it was getting dark. I'm like, okay, I got to get out of here before it gets dark um, just so I can see my way out of here. Mm -hmm. so but uh let's see that's the map here and i'm going to zoom in here i want to actually you know what let's take a break we come back um we'll okay. dig into this just and, a and as we go to break to answer tim cius's question uh -huh. what is the estimated population quickly i looked uh 19, 15 1600 uh, 2018 survey estimated 1173 1173 okay and they want to keep it uh, below a thousand, I think, is usually where they want to they want to keep them like nine hundred to twelve hundred, usually in that range. So, so 
So, all right, I tell you what, we're going to step outside. We'll take another break. We'll be right back. We'll continue the conversation. PSE Archery has always dominated the speed category. Now, the most revolutionary cam system ever to hit the market has perfected the shooting experience. Introducing PSE's Evolve Cam System, featuring extremely high let-off capabilities and the smoothest draw cycle in history. No other cam system has ever delivered this level of total comfort and total control. Experience PSE. Experience performance. Welcome back. Third segment of the show, Talking Elk. Yeah, we are. We're Michigan talking elk. elk. Michigan Elk. The, uh, the coveted Michigan Elk tag. Um, Charles asks, is it a cow tag or antlerless tag? You know, um, that's a good question. I don't know the answer to that yet. We'll find that out. Um, they say cow tag, but does that mean antlerless? You know, I, I don't know the answer to that, quite honestly. And that's something i got to get clarification on. That's why you go to the meeting. That's why you go to go to the meeting. So, right. But... Um, yeah, I, in the break I was talking about, I wish I'd have taken more photos or video, but when I got a, I got a late start. We'll backtrack just a little bit. Well, you were cleaning out, the, you were cleaning out your room. Yeah, and that that took a lot longer than I thought. By the time I got up into the elk area, it was like, I want to say four thirty ish. Okay, and I knew around six seven o'clock ish, elk would start moving in the area. Typically, that's when they're mostly seen in the evening. But there's, there were some things I, w- I wanted to drive by and make sure I found the meeting place, which I did. I found out where that was at, made sure of that. Don't want to wait till the last minute when you get into town and go, oh, whoa, where, where do, do I, I got to go? go? Yeah, where right. do I got to go? The other thing I wanted to do is I wanted to find uh, a room to stay in while I was there. Okay. I wanted to make sure I could get something booked uh, well enough in advance to where I had, you know, I had a place to stay. Because up there, there's not a lot. There's not a lot of options. Yeah, especially, and remember... Being December, this is also uh, like an off season. It's not the touristy season, unless we got a lot of snow. Unless you get the sleds, but yeah, uh, but it could be a bad time of the year to try. It. They could be shut down. Right, exactly. And and, and Charles asks uh, while you're scouting, do you have a base map app or Onyx app to help you scout? No, um, actually, I just I just use the map that I just threw up here on the picture. This is what I've got, and and I know this area somewhat um, because. This is where I first started cutting my teeth hunting, and and I the main roads and stuff I kind of know, and I've been in this wilderness area three or four times in the last seven eight years doing some fishing uh, on the trout streams there. So I've, I've kind of plundered around enough to know kind of where things are at, and and generally find my general direction through there. Right. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to do is not get the room secured. I also wanted to find restaurants, places to eat, you know, because you got to worry if you if you can't cook inside your room if you don't have facilities. Yeah, you got to find a place to eat. You got to find a place to eat. So that was something else I wanted to do, and I wanted to be fairly close to where my guide was. So I got up in the area, and I made a quick call. The guide, his son, lives right down the street here. Friends of our family, we've been oh here, right here. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. literally just down the road here, like maybe a quarter mile. We all grew up together. We co-owned a, a piece of land with a cabin on it when I was about four years old, and that's where I first cut my teeth in the outdoors. Was up there, so. I'm kind of going back full circle, you know, to where, right, exactly. where I learned how to how yeah. to get out in the woods as a kid, you know, a little kid. So, um, so I called him up and said, "Hey, what's the name of that that place that you recommended for those rooms?" And he told me, and uh, he said, well, "Where are you at?" And I said, "Well, I just got off freeway." I said, "I'm here in town." I said, "But I just need to know the direction to go." So I was only about three miles away. Oh, okay. So hung up the phone, drove down to the place, and started talking to the owner. And told him my situation. He's like, yeah. He said, we, we we got rooms and everything. He said, we can get you booked. And uh, he said, well, well, who recommended you? What was his name again? And before I could get the words out of my mouth, the guy I called on the phone, he called his dad, which lives about three miles on the other side of the freeway. He drove over. I oh, said, okay. And I said, him. And I pointed to the door. <laughs> so he come in. Nice. It, it was kind of cool. And uh, we sat and we talked and reminisced. And all of a sudden, an hour and a half had passed. Right. So, but uh, let me throw a little picture up here for those of you on the live stream. This this is what we're going to be staying in. Nice. A little place called Toasties. Toasties. And uh, Courtney, uh, have either of you guys shot an elk in any other states? Before? No. No. Never even hunted elk. I've hunted mule deer out in Colorado. Right. Um, but I've never, never been elk hunting. So this is all brand new to me. 
You know, and that's the thing, too. Um, here's another picture of Toasties. But, yeah, just little cabins, two-bedroom cabins. And they do have a kitchen in them, so I can cook. Oh, nice. So in case I don't wind up uh, going to the restaurant and don't want to spend that money, then I've got that option as well. Tim Sias is asking, why so few numbers? Of? Must be for elk, I elk, take it? Because they, they do not want them to basically deforest the area. They're in this prime wilderness area, and it's it's it's. In, micromanaged yeah they micromanage it there to a point where they do not want this elk population to to explode right and and take off because outside of this area is a lot of ag land and the farmers do not want the elk in the ag fields no they don't they do a number on those fields so you know the hay and the other crops are there they they definitely want to keep them contained in this area so and, and the fact that they they make this revenue off this lottery system too and then the tags uh my tag it's a hundred bucks yep you know so they, they generate five five for the, the yeah. application and five for the application for the... and yep exactly so yeah but uh so you found toasties yeah the guide came over and talked to you yep and actually what i like about this place uh I'll throw a picture back up here again is he said well how long are you going to be up here for us the entire week and i said so how does this work you know Hint, hint, I don't want to pay for an entire week if I shoot my elk early. I don't want to pay for a week. I'm not going to be here. Right. If I shoot it on day one, yeah. I'm out of here. And he said, well, the way we do it, we do a minimum of three days. And then we go day by day. Okay. Now, that's fair enough. Right. That's easy. So, Well, truthfully, if you shoot it on the day it opens, you're going to be, it's not going to be a couple hour thing to get this all taken care of. It's, no. It's, no. A, it's a whole process that you got to go, you got to go get it checked. You got to. Yeah. Well, and, and we talked, my guy, we talked about that a lot. He said, you know, he went through all the questions I had in my mind. As soon as I drew this tag, I'm like, oh, man, I don't know anything about this. Right. I've, you know, I know what elk are. I know what caliber gun I'm going to use. But who do I get a hold of? Where do I go? What's the process of, of getting a tag? What's the process of getting it checked in? And then what do I do with it once I, I've got it? I'm done with all that. Do I? I'm not going to be able to butcher this myself. This thing's huge. What? Can't, don't have a crane around to pick it up? Well, yeah. I mean, it's those are some things I had. To, I really started thinking about. I'm like, what am I going to do? So, my guide. Luckily, like I said, they're friends of ours. He's really going to help me out. He's, right. You know, this is what's what's really good about knowing who you're going, who's going to guide you. And he said, don't worry about it. He said, you don't need to bring up your trailer. Don't worry about none of that. He goes. We'll get the tractor out. He said, as long as we can get a tractor to it, he said, we'll pick it up, put it in the back of my truck. We'll drive it over to the, the DNR headquarters because there's a mandatory check place you, you have to take it. it to. And you also, the kill site, you have to mark off and and, and let them know where the kill yes. site is, take GPS coordinates. They come back and check the kill site to make sure you did everything legally. Right. Make sure you didn't injure another one. I guess that's a problem with people. They get excited and they... Don't wait and to make sure they got a clear shot. And, Ooh, okay. and all of a sudden, there's two. They shoot through one and hit another one. There's all those types of things. So they just want to make sure. That's how uh, how careful they are about this elk herd. Yeah, it's really micromanaged. I mean, it is. they they check everything. They're, the biologists are on top of it and the numbers and yeah. And then he asked me. He said, "Well, well, what are you going to do with it? Are you taking it? Going to try to take it home?" I'm like, uh, no, nah, I don't want to. That's a long way to take meat home. If it's warm, it's I'm screwed. Right. I said, do you have a butcher that you recommend? He goes, yep. He said, the guy that I use is excellent. He said, we take all of our elk there, and uh, everybody that you know comes through me, we take them over to him, and he does a great job. And there you go. You know, highly recommended. So that's what I'm going to do. Now that sounds like a plan. He said, well, take it from the field, put it in the truck, we we'll drive it to the DNR, and we'll go from there. We'll go over to the butcher shop, and he says. You know, what are you going to do with it after that? Are you going to have a mount done with it? I'm like, well, it's a cow. Don't really want to spend that kind of money on a taxidermy mount of just a cow head. I mean, I hate to say it, but that's a lot of money. I said, maybe a European mount. I don't know. You know, maybe keep that. Be a big skull. And I want to keep I want to keep the uh, the hide. Yep. I want to have the hide tanned. So, um, you know, beyond that, that and the meat and call it good. Cool. So. But like you said, it's always good to have somebody that knows how the process works. Well, yeah, because I went with a guy, oh, probably mm, five years ago, six years ago, maybe seven. guy I used to work with, he drew a tag, and he wanted me to go take a camera and videotape. So I went with. He did a do-it-yourself hunt, and we drove around for three days, hunted hard, never saw an elk. And I'm like, you know, I don't want that to happen to me. Right. So... Luckily, I I know I knew of two people immediately who do guide, 
And in the booklet, which I don't have here with me, it's in the other room. Yeah, they gave you a whole list. There's like 30 or 40 guides that they recommend, and my my guide is on that list. Got it like so, that. So yeah, it's uh, I'm you know I'm excited, man. It's, Absolutely, you can't. it kind of became real yesterday. Oh, when you're when you're driving around, yeah. thinking, Wow, I'm it, gonna be out here in a few short months. Yep. So it's all good. It, it it'll be good. It'll be better when you're slaving over dragging that thing out. Uh, one other thing I wanted to kind of show here. I'm going to zoom in on the map and talk a little bit about this. For those of you on the live stream, be able to see this. People on the podcast won't. But if you look on, on here, it says the green timber area here. That area there is exactly where I shot my first buck. Nice. I tried to find the parking area. Oh, did you find it? No, I did not. I, I think I think now I know why, and I think I know where it's at. Um, I just think it's on another road that I didn't go down. So when I go back up again, that's... You're going to find it? Uh, well, I don't know if I'm going to find it. I'm going to try. I'm going to look for it. But if you look on this map, you see these green triangles on this map. The green triangles are act- or rectangles or diamonds, whatever you call them there. Diamonds. The green diamonds are uh, managed food plot areas that the DNR puts in. Oh, okay. For the elk. Ah. And obviously the ones that are close to the roads are the viewing areas. Right. But you got a couple that are kind of deep in there, it looks yep. like. Yep, yeah. And like I said, the the black the black uh, circles are kill sites from last December's hunt, and the purple squares are places where elk have been seen so far in this, this, year. this year's count. Nice, so. nice. And people can I think go online and do that. Uh, how I, I'm not sure how they do that yeah. for the sightings. I don't know. I don't know if that was like an organized DNR survey that they did at, at some point in time this year, or if that was yeah, like you said, where people are just actually seeing them. So and uh, so purple was this okay I see it oh so the two that were right above are were on private land yeah oh sneaky so um somebody said it froze I'm, I'm wondering if we're talking about the, the our live feed if our live feed froze up uh, so. so far not on our end okay good we're still rocking and rolling good but yeah it it really became real yesterday when I drove up into the area once I went to the place where the rooms were and I talked to that gentleman and I started. Talking about you know reserving a play a room and everything, it it became all of a sudden it started to become real. I just wish I'd have seen some elk. And and actually I tell you what, I, I want to give the reason why this time of the year we probably didn't see them. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take a break and come back. I want to cover that. So we'll be right back after this. Acceleration is part of PSE's DNA. PSE pioneered the speed movement. Now they've developed the Vapor category to help you find the most powerful bows on the market to fit you. High speed equates to intense power and building the momentum you need to be successful. Are you a Vapor shooter? Find out at PSEArchery.com. This is our last segment. It is. Wow, man, this this show's kind of flew by. Mm-hmm. Haven't even really uh, felt like we just started. Actually, <laughs> I know, right? Uh, That's what happens when we get talking? But you know, we, we before we went to break, we talked a little bit about not seeing the elk and, and why. And talking with uh, the, the guy that's going to help me out, he said right now in the area. It's been so hot that they're staying down in the creek bottoms and the lowlands. Oh, where it's cool, staying near the water, which makes complete sense. You know, and where these food plots are, well, with all the rain we've had, if there's food plots in, that means they're on the high ground in open places. So if it's hot, they don't want to be there. Well, they probably wait till night. Yeah, or yeah, come in at night. Funny you say that. I went and visited the the, the Franken Moose Zoo. Mm-hmm. They do have an elk there, and he was laying in the creek bottom. Was he? You just mentioned that. And I'm like, yeah. They have a, I guess, a like a creek that runs through his yeah. end area. Yeah, he's laying right in there, staying there where it's nice and cool. Makes sense now, doesn't it? So it, it, absolutely. So they they probably sit tight most of the day, uh, especially I would say anywhere from eleven to five. Right. You know, maybe in the morning and late in the, in the evening. But uh, I don't blame them. Well, and that's kind of why I went out last, you know, yesterday evening when I got there. I wanted to maximize the time I had left and get up into the area. And drive through and see if I could see anything. Um, but even at that point in time, I mean, it was still almost, I think it was 75, maybe 80 degrees. And the wind was blowing. It wasn't super, super hot, but it, it, it did. It made sense. And, yep. and I, I talked to a couple of locals I pulled over that were actually, they were driving, looking and viewing for elk as well. 
And I said, hey, have you guys seen anything? I'm like, no, we're not seeing anything. I said, yeah, me either. You know, and they said, well, it's, you know, it's a little warm, still early in the season. They're down in the bottom. So right. I mean, every, that's what everybody's saying. Uh, Tim Sia says, are you going to try to get back before you hunt? Absolutely. You'll oh, be, yeah. You'll be back up there <laughs> plenty more times. Actually, I, I know I'll be back up in the area August 10th because we're having a meeting at our deer camp. When that meeting's over, I'm heading north, <laughs> right? even further north, up into the elk country. Uh, Charles Byram, what gun are you going with? Will you be on private property since you have a guide? Don't know uh, on the private property. Could be both, either or. Um, if you look, let me throw the map back up here. Uh, do, 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 do. Here's the big, this is me this morning. I had my coffee and was going, Hunter's blend coffee. Yep, going over everything. But um, as you can see, the orange outlined area, that is F, the one there that's marked F. That is my the area that I have a tag for. The white parcels are private land and the green is public land. And my guide has actually got a couple of leases on some private land. Okay. So if we don't hit, and actually, strangely enough, one of the pieces that they have good success with is the 80 acres that my dad used to co-own with him. Oh, really? Yeah, they've killed over 60 elk through the years on that property. No kidding. So he's like, yeah, you know, see what we can do there. You know, I mean, they're going to put cameras out and going to start scouting. And they'll let me know, you know, start sending some photos. Hey, you know, get y'all amped up and ready to go. Yeah, get y'all amped up. So, um, you know, that's funny that you you might end, you literally might end up where you started. That's what I, I, I so hope, um, you know, you talk about coming back full circle to think that I'm going to be hunting in the area where when, I mean, literally my dad and him and another guy got that land in that cabin in 1968. I was three years old. Actually, two and a half, two and a half going on three. So back up there when I was four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old, I forget what year my dad sold his part out. It was, I think I was 10, 11, 12, somewhere in there. And I went back when I, he invited us up when I was 17 to go hunt the green timber area. And that's where I shot my first buck. Okay. Which is literally, you know, if you look in this, eh, let me throw that map back up there. See, you guys are listening to podcasts. This is why you've got to go and watch the live stream. But this green timber area is literally four or five miles from that cabin. Cool. So I could be right back there where I shot my first buck. Right, exactly. You know, you might be back there and to take my first elk. You might find something you left on the property years ago. Uh, the only thing I think I left there was probably a, a a little skin where I fell down off a little Honda Trail 70 motorcycle. <laughs> man, we yeah. tore we tore the hillsides up with that thing, Did man. Did you? Ah, no. That's what you were doing up there. But... Uh, but yeah, no, you might actually end up where you started, which would be kind of cool. And I've spent a lot of time. I've spent three trips up there with with Jacob, uh, trout fishing. Yep. So you know, I, here I took my son back to a place where I cut my teeth, and he likes to fish. And now I'm going back, you know, bringing it back full circle. It, it's the circle of hunting. It's it's really cool, you know. And that's why I want my dad to come up. I want him to be a part of it. So that'd be cool if he could make it up. I'm hoping. Keep my fingers crossed. Right. So. Uh, but as far as the gun, he asked about a gun. Yes. What gun are you going to use? I'm probably going to use my Remington. Not my, No, I take it back. I'm probably going to use my Browning uh, seven millimeter Rem Mag. Okay. That's probably what I'm going to use. It's got a little. It's a little bit bigger than the thirty out six, so it's got some more punch. A little longer distance. Uh, I can shoot a little. I can shoot longer distance with it. Go two seventy. Could go two seventy. Um, you know, obviously, I'll I'll take another rifle with me. So I don't know if I'll take a two seventy backup or my thirty out six. That's something I've I've kind of started doing here in the last five, six, seven years is taking another rifle with you and making sure it's sighted in right. in case something happens. You still got a firearm to use in the field. So, Absolutely. So I always do that. You know, it's funny that they marked on there um, even the food plots that they they put out for the elk. Yeah. Well, they they want people to to know where to go because they they want. They want elk to be shot. They want to keep the herd managed, so they make it as easy as it can be for you to be successful. Right, you know? exactly. So it's, uh, you know, not many people get this opportunity, so they want to make doggone sure you get that, a good opportunity. that you get a good opportunity at it. Make yep. it make it worth your while. Yep. Because, like you said, 200 out of 40,000. Yeah, it's, uh, see, did I have, I think I had a the full, full-blown map here. Yeah, the big map. You know, and, and this area, you know, you look at it, and it's like, wow, that's a big area. But this really, it's only about, 
Oh, see, each one of them, them squares is a mile. See, it, well, the little squares are a mile. Then the other ones are townships. You know, across that map, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's 36 miles across. And then one, two, three, four high. So that's another 24, you know, 36 miles by 24. It's not a real big area. No, it's not. You know? Not real big at all. So, and that's that's the core area. Uh, they do venture a little further than that, but but not much. Right. And they get, and do you know how many areas they actually do have? As far uh, as what? Hunting areas. You mean for like zones, tags? Your different zones. Well, there's there's X which is the outlying area, and then there's F and G. F and G are your late late December hunts. Uh, the X areas are your 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 two early. I think there's two early hunts. There's three hunts total, right? I think so. Two early, well, October, September, October, and December, right? Uh, like I have to go check. I don't know. I know there's a September hunt. I know there's a December hunt, and I think if they don't meet their quota, I know there's a late a later hunt oh, okay. after that. But I, I, it seems like there's another hunt uh in the fall in the early fall but i can't remember but anyway what they're trying to do is if you look at the left side of that map that's i-75 yep they want the elk to stay east of that yes they don't want them going over and they do cross that. i've seen actually oh, yeah, I, I watched a bull elk cross the freeway right in front of me especially up towards Mackinac there that's yeah the elk, the elk signs right there yeah so that's uh that's why they they have those hunts in those outlying areas and and as you get around it like to the east that's big egg area, you know. They want them elk contained in the na- in the yep. uh, Pigeon River Wildlife Area. Yep, exactly. So. They want to they want to micromanage them and keep them at bay. Yep. So, but uh, that's that's it, man. Well, it'll be interesting to see when you start getting trail camera photos and see what he's got up his sleeve to show you, um, and see how it progresses through. Uh, let's see. This is mid July, uh, August, September, getting into October. Yeah, I figure. See, so it's July now. So July fourteenth is is today the fourteenth. Yes, it is. So August, September, October, November. Just five months from today is, is my hunt. Is your five months day. from today is opening day. There you go. Look at that. So five months away. You ready? No, not even close. You know, the next thing I got through is I'm gonna start going through gear. You know, going through all my gear. You know, get my heavy winter gear out. Get my uh, my mid season gear out because. We've seen December, you know, the middle of December, it can be zero or it can be 40 degrees. Yes, absolutely. You, you never know. You can have 16 inches of snow or no snow. No snow, yeah. It can be zero or 40. It could be raining. Yeah. It could be take your pick. Yeah, you never know. Right, exactly. So, and that's another thing a good about being close to your hunting area is if you do get bad weather that week, mm-hmm. you don't have to go far right. to get like if you had to travel over an hour or something, which ends up being like two hours, three hours. Yeah, a lot of that you you get mentally spent just driving that. Right. So well, here and I was talking to our, one of our buddies at Deer Camp, you know, and he he's you know suggestion was you know check uh, Gaylord out, you know, stay in Gaylord. You know, the the price of a room down there could be a little cheaper, maybe. These are eighty five a night for these these little cabins, any bit, which is not bad at all, and it's got a little kitchen so you can cook. If I stay in a hotel. Down there, that's about a twenty to twenty-five mile drive. Okay, the weather's bad, like you said. It'll double your drive time. Plus, you have to get up, you have to find food, eat breakfast, get right. get, you know all all that plays into it. And I'm like, this is about six miles from his house. There you go. So six minute drive, you can be ready with the guide. Yep, and be ready to go. Yep. Even if there's a little bit of a bad weather, it won't be that you know. Right. So and he's got a truck. It sounds like so that'd be cool. Right. So. Just trying to maximize and think things through. That's that's the bigger issue. Is, is, and you got five months to do it. Yeah. Well, and you know what? We started working out nine months ago, and it seems like it was nine days ago. I mean, time's flown by. Time has flown by. You know? And we'll be back there tomorrow night. Yeah, absolutely. Before and you know I see. I did see a picture of Ken getting out on the trail, uh, working out. I think he was. I don't know if he was hiking or what he was doing with it. But who's that? Ken Secluder. Yeah, he posted on our page. Uh, he was. How did I miss that? How did you? How, is that today? No, no, no. It was a couple days ago. I missed that. You did miss it. I've been so wrapped up in everything this weekend. You know, I was actually offline for about a day and a half. It was kind of cool. You know, when I got up north, we had no internet. Internet, we wasn't hooked up. I had to work on that the next day. But Did you see any bald eagles? No, and I was okay. looking, too. Okay. No, didn't see any bald eagles. It's my standard question to you, because I always think about that, seeing it over the, the lake there. Yeah. You know, it seemed... 
pretty regular. Yeah, exactly. You yes. know, at our place. But I didn't get out a lot. I just, I, I did my work at camp. And, you know, and speaking of camp, we've got a few minutes here. I just, I, I want to go back to what I said at the beginning of the show. We do have a couple memberships uh, open up right now. If anybody out there is in the Michigan area, you don't have to live in Michigan, obviously, but it's, it makes it a lot easier. Uh, looking for a hunting uh, hunting camp uh, to join, get a hold of me, you know, and I'll, I'll get you the pertinent information. So, because we're looking for uh, for some couple new members. So, what else is going on? Anything? Uh, not really. Just dog days of summer. You know how it goes. We're trying to get uh, into August. Shooting the bow? I did shoot uh, a little bit last week. Um, felt good to shoot. And then um, I was I was playing carpenter all weekend. So Okay. I yeah. shot uh, mine a little bit today. I actually stepped out with it. Uh, I've been pounding 20 and 30 yards pretty regular, and I wanted to get my sight tape built. So I nailed down 30 yards, got that mark set. And I started stepping back to where I could work my way back what to two, what two, 65. What two marks are you going to use? 30 and 65 is what, oh, 30 and 65. what Jim over at Spot Shooter wants. Okay. So got back to 65 yards. Nice. Yeah, it, it, that, that bow, it, it, it pounds at longer distances. I, I can't figure out, I, well, I think I know why. I'm better at long distance than I am at short distance because I think it's me getting used to that lens. How do you like the new arrows? There like, you go. Like that. At six, I, I, I grouped them, oh, probably a half dollar at 65 yards. I was like, whoa, giggity. <laughs> nice feeling. Nice. I was blown away. That thing is, it's it's nice at 65. Absolutely. Nice at 50, at 40, 30. Um, 20 and 30, I like I said, I'm, I'm not as good, and I think it's because of the lens. You know, it's got that magnifier in it, and I'm noticing I'm drift. Ca- the drift. I, I it, that uh, there's more drift, obviously, at that shorter distance because you you can see a lot more of the target. Yeah, <laughs> you know, makes that bullseye big. Yeah. So you going, is it four power? Four power. Yes. Yep. Same ones as I got. Um, I noticed that those arrows they 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 feel just a little heavier than what we were using before at the range. A little more front heavy. So right. That's what yeah. he said. He was going with. He he said what grains one hundred. 140. 140. 140 green tips. But that counts the insert and everything. Yep, so absolutely. He said normally by the time you add everything up on 100 green, you're you're pushing about 120 with uh, with the glue and with the insert. Right. You know, so. It's yeah. not all free. Right. It all adds up. Yeah, exactly. So, but uh, yeah, no. So, uh, no, just doing the uh, summer thing here. And this coming weekend, anything? This coming weekend, uh, off the top of my head. We do have a special guest coming next weekend. So yes. stay tuned for that. Yes, Somebody we'll that we actually met at Outdoor Rama uh, while we were hanging out with the guys from Easy Cut. Yes. So, so we're going to have them on, and then in two weeks we'll have on another guest. So next two weeks we'll have guests on both weeks. Sounds good. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, we're bumping up here at the end of the show on the podcast portion, so uh, we'll go ahead and wrap that up. We'll entertain a few questions here at the end of the show on the live stream side of it. So and, for those of you on the podcast. And uh, we talked to Tread last week. We'll probably give him a, a break this week, so we'll probably get, try to get him in, in about two weeks. Seems to be a, a good span right. of time. Yeah, we do those on Wednesday nights. So yep. if, if you guys and gals uh, aren't familiar with that, we've been uh, doing some shows with Tread Barda. He's in Alaska. This last week we talked about fishing a lot. And, and, and fishing and, and, and literally <laughs> running into a bear with a wheelchair. Yeah. Pretty darn close when you're face to face. Face to face on the ground with a bear. And it's wolfing at you. Yeah, it's wolfing at you. So, <laughs> so but anyways, it's uh, worth the listen. Exactly. So next week, special guest, probably uh, midweek after that, we'll see if we can get Tread on, talk to him again for episode number five. All right, so for those of you on the podcast, y'all take care. We'll be back again next week. And don't forget, you can catch us in syndication at 2 p.m. Eastern Time on goodtalkradio.com. This episode was brought to you by PSE Archery, Scentlock Technologies, Scent Blocker, Rambo Bikes, Hunter's Blend Coffee, Limwalker Game Calls, Stanislavski Releases, Copper John Sights, Easy Cut Outdoor Products, Fourth Arrow Camera Arms, Wind Sense Hunting Sense, X Stand Tree Stands, Spot Shooters, Gut Check Indicators, and Packer Max Cult Packers. Thanks for listening and join us again here next week. Until then, remember, as we always like to say, if you're out on the water or in the woods, shoot straight and be safe until next week on the Up North Journal.